which then ties back to Noah and the days of the flood, and God is grieved. God is grieved at the actions of Hamas, and he is not going to sit back and take this lightly. God is going to help Israel defeat her enemies. Have you ever wondered how the Israelites survived so many challenges and tribulations throughout their history? The Bible provides us with accounts of seven miraculous events where God intervened to save his people. The Israelites were a people chosen by God. He had a special plan for them and he was determined to see it through. Like the parting of the Red Sea or these Moses raising his hands to heaven and God gave the Israelites the strength to win the battle. So, without wasting any time, let's get into this. The Parting of the Red Sea In the ancient tale of the Exodus, the parting of the Red Sea stands as an awe-inspiring testament to divine intervention. As the sun bore witness to the horizon, the enslaved Israelites found themselves at the edge of the vast, unforgiving expanse of the Red Sea. Their deliverance seemed an impossible dream, a mere whisper in the howling winds of oppression. Moses a reluctant yet steadfast leader chosen by God, guided his people toward the land promised to them by the divine. With Egypt's bitter taste still lingering, the enslaved descendants of Jacob longed for freedom, a chance to walk on soil unbound by the shackles of servitude. But their pursuit of liberty was threatened. The retreating footfalls of escape were shadowed by the relentless pursuit of the Egyptian army. Their oppressors, driven by fury and vengeance, sought to snuff out the flickering hope of emancipation. Then, in that critical hour, something extraordinary unfolded. The waters of the Red Sea, as if responding to the silent plea of a beleaguered nation, parted before their eyes. An unimaginable path carved through the waters, inviting the Israelites to step onto the dry seabed. Yet as the pursuing Egyptian army dared to follow, the sea's embrace returned, engulfing the forces of oppression. The crashing waves whispered a story of liberation, silencing the echoes of tyranny beneath the depths. The clash at Rephidim against the Amalekites. In the arduous journey towards the coveted land of Canaan, the people of Israel encountered a significant trial at Rephidim, a clash that would etch itself into the annals of their history. The Amalekites, emerging as an unexpected foe, confronted the Israelites, seeking to thwart their progress. In this critical juncture, divine providence intervened, offering guidance and strength to the embattled Israelites. Moses, a conduit for God's guidance, raised his hands, a symbol of divine support and strength, while Joshua led the Israelite forces against the Amalekites. Atop a hill, Moses held aloft the staff of God a representation of divine assistance in the turmoil of battle. The ebbs and flows of the confrontation were tied to the movement of his hands, a captivating depiction of the interplay between divine influence and mortal endeavor. Exodus 17.11 recounts how, as long as Moses upheld his hands, the Israelites prevailed in battle. However, human frailty succumbed to exhaustion, compelling Aaron and Hur to aid Moses, supporting his arms until the setting sun sealed the triumphant victory of Israel. This clash against the Amalekites would not merely echo in the victories of the Israelites, it would become a symbol of the intertwining of mortal resolve and divine fortification. The Fall of the Walls of Jericho In the annals of ancient history, the walls of Jericho hold a tale of divine orchestration and miraculous conquest, etching an indelible mark upon the journey of the Israelites to claim their promised land. Jericho, a city fortified and formidable, stood as an impediment on the path to the divine destiny of Israel. God's plan, a beacon of hope in the face of the city's impregnability, unfolded through an extraordinary plan for its capture. Divine intervention became the crux of the siege, guiding the Israelites on a unique path to victory. The plan unfurled with a divine mandate to march around the impregnable walls of Jericho. The Israelites, led by priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant, embarked on a ceremonial march around the city once a day for six consecutive days. The crescendo of this divine symphony was orchestrated on the seventh day. 
As the people circled the city seven times, the air filled with anticipation. With the resounding blast of priestly trumpets and the fervent shouts of the people, the miraculous moment arrived. As if bowing to the divine decree, the walls of Jericho collapsed, crumbling before the collective might of faith and divine proclamation. If you are watching this video far enough, then make sure to like it and also subscribe to the channel, because it helps us to create more content like this. Gideon's inspired victory over the Midianites in the land of Ephraim. In the heart of a time overshadowed by the oppressive grip of the Midianites, Gideon arose as a beacon of hope and defiance. In an era marked by the haunting shadow of invasion and subjugation, Gideon emerged as a figure of inspirational leadership and divine guidance destined to lead his people toward liberation. Under the weight of Midianite oppression, Gideon's leadership shone through like a radiant light piercing the darkness. Recognized as a man from the tribe of Manasseh and a descendant of Joash, Gideon was chosen to confront the menace that plagued the land of Ephraim. Divine Providence, recognizing Gideon's potential, revealed a strategic plan that would pave the way for victory. In a striking display of divine guidance, Gideon was instructed to gather valiant men from various tribes. A vital lesson in the art of war unfolded as the divine hand. Desiring to emphasize that victory was not solely from human might, trimmed down the army to a select 300 warriors. In a stroke of brilliance guided by the divine, Gideon hatched a daring and ingenious plan. Armed with trumpets, hidden torches within pitchers, and a strategy veiled in chaos, the seemingly outnumbered force set out to face the Midianites. They encircled the enemy camp, positioning themselves strategically and, at a signal from Gideon, unleashed the planned chaos. The trumpets blared, the pitchers shattered, and the torches were revealed, casting an illusion of a massive army suddenly descending upon the Midianites. The clever ruse, under divine guidance, plunged the enemy into confusion and terror. Disarrayed and overwhelmed by the sudden, unexpected assault, the Midianites fell into disorganized retreat, meeting their decisive defeat at the hands of Israel. Mercy revealed in Nineveh. In the ancient story of Nineveh, a narrative of divine compassion and human redemption unfolds as a profound testament to the breadth of mercy within the tapestry of existence. At the core of this tale lies the prophetic voice of Jonah, a messenger tasked with delivering a harrowing prophecy of imminent destruction looming over the city. Jonah, the reluctant prophet, carried a message of impending doom to the grand city of Nineveh, infamous for its hostilities against Israel. His resounding proclamation reverberated through the city's labyrinthine streets, foretelling the imminent wrath of the divine. However, in an unexpected twist, the people of Nineveh responded in a manner that transcended expectation. The king and the citizens, upon hearing Jonah's ominous warning, were gripped by a profound sense of repentance. The resonating cry for divine clemency echoed through the grand avenues, an authentic plea born of genuine contrition. Moved by the authenticity of this collective penitence, God, in an awe-inspiring demonstration of unfathomable mercy, chose to reconsider the foretold judgment. In a divine gesture that defied the anticipated cataclysm, Nineveh was spared from the impending doom. This act of divine forbearance not only averted the city's imminent downfall, but also painted a resplendent canvas of divine magnanimity. Through the benevolence shown to a city known for its adversities against Israel, God's mercy shone forth, illuminating the pathways of redemption and offering a glimpse into the expansive reservoirs of divine grace. The sparing of Nineveh remains an enduring testament to the vast expanse of divine compassion, transcending boundaries and speaking to the capacity for redemption within the human spirit. It stands as a narrative of divine leniency and the unfathomable grace extended even to those deemed at the brink of divine retribution. The Significant Confrontation of Gog and Magog In the prophetic verses penned by Ezekiel, a forewarning surfaces concerning a formidable threat to the descendants of Jacob, 
an imminent confrontation with Gog and Magog. This prophecy, laced with cryptic visions, heralds a time where peace within the sacred land of Israel would be challenged by an ominous and formidable adversary. The enigmatic imagery foretold a future where the peace of the Jews, having finally settled in the cherished land of Israel, would face a menacing adversary. Gog, the symbol of aggression, emerges to confront the peaceful settlement of the descendants of Jacob, stirring divine wrath and upheaval. The divine response to this imminent threat is depicted as an overpowering display of divine might, thwarting the aggression and heralding a resounding victory over the aggressors. In the face of the foretold confrontation, the Lord, with a fervor befitting the heavens, ensures triumph against the impending adversary securing the peace and sanctity of the Holy Land. Ezekiel's vision, while foretelling a period of turmoil and confrontation, also envisages a revival for the descendants of Jacob. The scattered Jews, in a poetic return to their homeland, find a renewed sense of unity and purpose, heralding a renaissance for the people of Israel. This revival, a prophetic brushstroke across the canvas of time, promises a restoration of their sacred bond with the land and an uplifting return to their cherished home. The significant confrontation of Gog and Magog stands as a pivotal moment in the grand tapestry of Israel's history, symbolizing not just a divine victory over impending adversity, but also the revival and resurgence of the scattered people of Israel. It remains an integral part of the esoteric prophecies, holding a promise of divine intervention and the restoration of a cherished homeland for the descendants of Jacob. Hezekiah, and the shadow of Assyria. In the dusk of antiquity, the annals of history bore witness to a tale of daunting shadows and the unwavering courage of Hezekiah, monarch of Judah, in the face of the menacing colossus that was the Assyrian Empire. The formidable empire loomed like an ominous tempest on the horizon, casting its foreboding shadow over the kingdom of Judah. The dire news of Assyrian conquests reverberated through the land, instilling a profound fear in the hearts of the people. The powerful Sennacherib and his legions, already victorious in raising fortresses and advancing toward the city of Lachish, cast an ominous pall over the kingdom of Judah. Hezekiah, standing as the embodiment of resilience and faith, turned his gaze heavenward, seeking divine intercession in the face of imminent calamity. With the might of Assyria encamped around Jerusalem's walls, the city lay under siege, the Assyrians taunting and mocking the defenders, their threats painting a bleak picture of doom and despair. However, as the annals recount, at the break of a new day, a celestial intervention unfolded. The Assyrian legions poised for conquest met an inexplicable fate as divine intervention took center stage. In a miraculous turn of events, Sennacherib's army met an unexpected and staggering defeat. Forced into a sudden and inexplicable retreat to Nineveh, the once mighty king met his tragic demise at the hands of his own sons. The abrupt fall of the invincible Assyrian army under the shadow of divine might marked a pivotal turning point in history. At the end, let us know your thoughts in the comment below and also be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more. Meanwhile, thanks for watching.